Welcome to the Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. I'm Katie Virtue, a consultant with Festive Road and a member of the GBTA Tech Committee. I'll be your host for today's episode. The Tech Committee has been hosting the Tech Safari series for a few years now. Our aim was to provide education to GBTA members on different solutions and providers who are out there creating cutting edge technology solutions in business travel. We have hosted different webinars. Um, We had a tech safari in-person live session at GBTA convention. And now we have started a podcast series to share those new technologies, um, the solutions and the providers that we're seeing. Today, I'll be talking with Devin Tavona from Coupa to learn more about the company and their technology first approach to T&E management. Thanks for joining me today, Devin. Do you want to share a little bit more about your background and yourself? Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me today. Um, A little background about myself. I've been in travel and expense management uh, software for about 10 years ago. And I joined Coupa by way of the acquisition of Pana about two years ago. Um, at Pana, I served as our founder and CEO, where we built travel technology used by hundreds of customers worldwide, both in high growth industries such as technology and life sciences, but also used by some of the largest brands in the world. And uh, I joined Coupa. Um, to support the integration of Pana, my company, and Yapta, which was a separate acquisition that we made the year prior. And in in my role today, I support the integration of those two products and the launch of our new travel solution, uh, which we launched earlier this year. And today I support our our overall integrated travel and expense management offering. Thanks, Devin. And, and yeah, I think that's definitely one of the um, reasons we wanted to bring you on and, and hear more about the Coupa solution because people might know Coupa, certainly. Um, I'm sure a lot of people knew about Yapta and, and Pana as well, but now all of it kind of coming together in this um, solution for, for business travel. So can you tell us more about what you launched this past year? Yeah, definitely. I, I think you're right. I think people know of Coupa, but don't think Coupa in in the travel and expense management space. And one of my goals is is to change that. Um, you know, people often think procurement when when they think of Coupa, and it's true. Sixteen years ago, we started as a procurement platform, uh, really automating requisitions, purchase orders, invoice processing, etc. Um, but but today. Coupa's platform is, is much broader. Uh, Coupa it helps organizations maximize the value of every single dollar that they spend, whether that's on goods, whether that's services, materials, or in our case, travel and expenses. And our ambition is really broad. We solve for, for a category that we call business spend management, or, or the abbreviation BSM, because we see so many different silos and people and processes that prevent uh, companies from really realizing results and, and and value. And, you know, when I heard that silos between people and processes, when, when I was first joining Coupa, I was like, that sounds familiar. We've got a lot of those silos and people and people and processes and in travel uh, as well. So, um, you know, the, 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 the platform based approach really has influenced the way that we think about building, building our travel and expense solution. Um, you know, analogy that I, I like to use when thinking about business spend management, um, and we use it, it a lot here, is it, it, one, of the, one of the companies that we admire most is Salesforce. You know, Salesforce really has started as a CRM, a, a customer relationship manager for uh, you know, tracking your sales efforts but really has expanded broadly to be your platform for all things revenue. You can have a customer uh, help portal. You can have a marketing automation software. You have your CRM. And so as Salesforce is to, to revenue, Coupa is your platform to spend, a single platform to give you a full, full visibility into, into all your spend. And so when, the, when we looked at travel and expense management, we saw a huge value in helping customers manage that T&E spend on that single business spend platform. Um, And our our history of innovation in the space actually goes back um, much further than in my involvement, actually. Uh, In 2010, 
Uh, we released our expense management capabilities, which today are used by a large portion of our customers uh, on the procurement side. Uh, they also use our extensive solution. So already they're seeing the value of procurement spend, direct and indirect procurement spend on the same platform as, as expense reporting. Um, and in 2018, we were an early pioneer in adoption of virtual payment technology. And today we process over a billion dollars of virtual payments per month. Um, and so we kind of have rounded it out this year by adding travel management in, into the mix this year. So with this latest release uh, earlier this year, Hoopa Travel Expense is now fully integrated travel management, expense management, and virtual payments technology all combined together on, on really a single platform. And it's that single platform approach that we're, we're proud of, excited about, and we think is going to have a lot of value to customers. Okay, great. Thank you for that that overview. Some some good points. Um, and you know, maybe one of the first ones I want to dive into a bit more is first understanding some of these problems you're trying to solve. And, and you hit it broadly, right? In terms of having one platform, you mentioned the the problem you saw around some of those silos with with people and process. Um, and I and I know you know a lot of people are turning to look to technology. To solve some of these issues, automation, um, better experience. What what are you seeing? You know, like I said, you you mentioned silos. What other problems have you seen that you are trying to solve with this one platform? Yeah, you know, at, at Coupa we have a strategy uh, where we look at kind of three core problems. And then kind of the, the matching opportunities there are to, to differentiate for us um, across all business spend management. Um, and, and when we looked at travel, I think they, they lined up pretty perfectly. The first is, is challenges that customers have related to capturing all of their, their spend. And, you know, in travel, we, we talk about this as our, our in-channel adoption rate. Um, the, the kind of industry standard that we've come to expect on in-channel adoption rates is like, you know, I can get about half my, my travelers using the, the program if I am actively invested in, uh, you know, um, educating them on why there's benefits of booking in channel, why there's benefits of booking on our platform. And, and we felt that that was, was not a good, not a large enough visibility to, to a program. I mean, if you're only looking at half of your travel spend, you're only optimizing half of that travel spend, you're only making decisions based on half of that travel spend. So we've really focused core on user adoption and user experience uh, in order. And, and you know, I, I wanna, I wanna you know, back up and say, lots of people say we've got an easy to use solution. The user adoption, user experience is, is what we care about. But for us, it is, it is absolutely core to the strategy. One of the core metrics that we measure ourselves by as a product management team on this is what our in-channel adoption rates are. And if we're not seeing high enough in-channel adoption rates within one of our customers, we will get involved with that customer and say, hey, let's look at your travel program. Let's try and figure out why um, you aren't seeing the in-channel adoption rates that, that our um, industry benchmarks uh, show us that, that you should be or that our, that our leaders on our platform are achieving. Because often it's, it's a combination of both the tool and how people are using the tool um, that, that leads to those, those in-channel adoption rates. That's really problem number one. Um, problem number two is, is, is breaking down some of those silos that, that exist in, in the space. Um, you know, if you want to build a really, really great travel and expense management platform today, you are tying together. You're, you're, you're not only a T and travel and expense management professional, you are a integrations professional <laughs> because you're tying together so many different broad systems together. You're tying together your servicing solution, your booking solution, your reporting solution, your expense management solution, your payment solution, your uh, duty of care solution. And, and so what we've really done is, is within travel and expenses, broken down those silos. And I can provide a little bit, bit more detail there on, on how we've done that, but, but then also broken out the silos that, that keep travel and expense management from connecting to the rest of, of your business spend. So for example, um, and this is more on the expense management side than, than on the travel side, but we should be able to show you where people are submitting expense reports for things like office supplies, for things like trainings and seminars that should have gone through your procurement process anyway. And in fact, we know over on the procurement side of the house, you have a contract with a uh, you know, office supplies company uh, and you could be saving on, on that, but people are expensing it instead. That's one of the, the ways that we're, we're thinking about breaking down those silos. 
And then really the third, um, third pillar of our strategy and third um, piece, piece of the, the, the really third problem set that, that we're trying to solve for is um, not only silos within a company, but silos in between companies. Um, and, and this is where uh, one of the uh, pieces that's been core to our strategy is something called community.ai. And community.ai um, broadly describes the strategy of taking the $4 trillion of spend that's flown through, that, that's gone through the Coupa platform since our, our founding, anonymizing that, aggregating that data, and using that to help our customers make smarter decisions. Um, and, and really, because no one's done a good job of breaking down not only the silos within your, your, your business, but the silos outside of your business, you can get like basic benchmarking from, from some providers. And in your quarterly business review, they might tell you how your program is backing up against others. But it's not active every day in the program, taking insights from, I'm looking at programs that, that are spending similar to you, that have similar travel policies to you. And I'm helping you with prescriptive actions um, on ways that you can change your program based on that data. So those are really the three core pain points that we're trying to solve. To, to summarize it, um, start with focusing on the adoption curve, because if you don't have uh, anyone adopting your solution, there's no point in optimizing, there's no point in amplifying that spend. Second, help you optimize that spend by connecting together those different silos. And then third, uh, really amplify the value of that spend through, through the power of the community. Okay, great. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot there that's, you know, I know we've, we've seen um, in the industry, people trying to, to tackle and, and manage. Um, so thank you for, for diving into those, especially that third one around the decisions and people wanting to not only have the benchmarking, but then, you know, be able to do what if scenarios and um, have an informed decisions for their program using that data. Okay. So um, Coupa references then this, this technology first solution. Um, you've talked about these pillars, this one platform. You, and we've seen some others try to you know, share a platform approach um, in some ways um, to, to the industry. Can you talk a little bit more about maybe what's different about the Coupa approach versus other types of platforms um, that might be available? Yeah, definitely. And, and, and I think you're right. A lot of people have, have taken that or, or tried to market that platform based approach as the place where you can build your your travel program on top of. And I think the challenge there is that platform, a platform based approach is, is not just a marketing strategy that, that you can go out and do. Um, it needs to be core to how you designed and, and built the platform. And I think one of the exciting things that Coop has been doing is we've been thinking platform since day one. You know, we we sure our, our beachhead was or and, and the place that we started was in procurement software, but uh, Rob, our CEO, always knew that we wanted to be that single platform for all spend. So we've been building things with like we've been making decisions like common user interface components so that, you know, when example, we acquire a company like Pana or acquire a company like Yapta, we can very quickly make it look and feel and act like the rest of our, our suite so that, you know, you're not taking a jumbled set of acquisitions and then therefore giving a jumbled, you know, user experience to the end user where they need to log into different platforms and solutions. So when we say that we are a single platform for all spend, we really mean that. It's a single login. It's a single pane of glass experience. It all looks the same. It all has the same focus and detail on user um, uh, usability, adoption, um, and again, in, in the travel space, that's all to drive in channel adoption. So, you know, just putting putting our money where our mouth is, we see much much higher uh, uh, in channel adoption rates um, than uh, the the industry benchmarks that we're seeing, and um, that's across all different types of, of customers. Our small customers who uh, don't have mandated programs, uh, who just encourage travelers to use the tool. Travelers are actually actively seeing the benefits of booking on our platform rather than booking off of our platform and choosing that at a rate that's significantly higher than than the industry today. But then also in our mandated programs, we see far less leakage, particularly in categories where, where leakage is particularly strong, um, for example, in, in, in hotels and cars. So um, I think that's really what we mean when we say technology first solution, that, that that's focusing on that user experience and the usability of our platform. Um, I think the other way that we've applied technology first 
platform to our approach is in that that the breaking down of silos, that second area that that I talked about. Um, and and I talked about that example of showing you where you had spend that should have gone through a procurement process rather than, than an expense report. And that's just one example of the, the connections that we've made. That, that's actually a live feature on our platform today. We call it pro procurable insights. We show you where spend is showing up on an expense report that should have gone through that procurement channel. I think one really good example of this, again, not in the travel space, but in the expense space, um, is a shadow IT spend. I think we all have, have been guilty of this before. We really want a SaaS software that's available online. We sign up for that 30 day free trial on our you know, company card, which we know really is supposed to be for travel uh, expenses, but we really need the software. We need to get it in. Well, that happens hundreds of times across our large organizations on, on a monthly basis. And really that creates a huge uh, you know, IT and security risk for, for our customers because they don't have visibility into that spend. And, and by tying together travel and expense management, we're, we're seeing, seeing that all on the same platform, all enabled by, again, the platform approach, this technology first approach. Um, and then I'd say the last area of, of silos that I think really exemplifies that, that technology first approach and that platform based approach um, is how much is on a single platform for our customers. They can build a full travel and expense management platform without any additional contracts, just, just through through Coupa. So we have an expense management solution, like we've talked about, uh, a travel management solution. Um, we have a price assurance uh, uh, capability that we um, inherited from the Yapt acquisition. So on average, our customers save about one to 3% on their travel spend through reshopping um, of, of flights and hotels. Um, but we also have partnered with Travel Leaders Corporate to bring uh, a travel servicing solution on the platform as well. We've also taken a technology first approach to that. So uh, Travel Leaders Corporate is available via phone, via email, but I think uh, most critically via chat that's directly embedded into our platform. So, and that's how I, I love to get support. Um, you know, I, 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 it feels like texting. I text in, hey, I need to change my flight. And, you know, I know I can do that on a tool. We do have, uh, you know, very powerful self-service exchange capabilities on the tool. But, you know, if I'm on the go, it's just easier for, for me to talk to a person. And on the Coupa platform, I can get to that person, I can get support, and I can get out in, in seconds. So then to... To that point too, do you uh, you offer the booking solution um, so someone can can do travel booking through a, a Coupa tool? Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So okay. it's a, it's an online booking tool. It's expense management software. It's yeah. servicing, um, and then also you know all the things that come with 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 those. So you know reporting uh, suite. Um, uh, we have negotiated great rates on behalf of our customers um, through a program that we call Coupe Advantage. Um, Coupe Advantage is where we take the, and we do this across multiple industries. So across, you know, we do this for our companies in their software spend. We do this for our customers in their IT spend. But Coupe Advantage takes the collective spending power of our customers, pools that together. And then use that to offer them great, great negotiated discounts. And so we've done that for air, car, and, and hotel as well. We offer those loaded in. We'll, of course, load our, our customers' negotiated rates onto the, the platform as well. But for areas where customers might not have the strongest rates um, or, or for smaller customers who might not you know, be ready to negotiate their own air contract, we, we offer um, I guess really great default, so default rates. And um, because we're, we're the... The tech committee, I have to ask, is all of this available on mobile as well? Absolutely. Yeah, mobile has been core to Coupa strategy um, uh, from, from day one. So we have a fantastic mobile application, which has travel and expense management unified together with really great capabilities like industry leading OCR. So I can you know, snap a picture of my receipt. Um, we'll pull the merchant data, we'll pull the currency data, we'll pull the, the transaction data off of it. Um, a feature that I thought was so hokey, but is one of our most loved, and now I find myself using it all the time, we have uh, expense captured by voice. So I can just talk into my phone and I can say Starbucks for $5. And, um, you know, Coupa has a policy where we don't need receipts under $25. It's the fastest and easiest way for, for me to get expense management done. So. So yeah, great, great mobile application on, on a single platform, um, again, on mobile as well. So the same place that I can shop um, for 
flights and hotels on mobile is the same place that I can shop for laptops and IT equipment if I'm using our procurement module as well. Okay, great. Yeah, amazing how now even the the effort to have to send a text message, you're like, oh, I can't just speak into my, I know. <laughs> my phone for something. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. But it's a great uh, feature for that, that new younger generation. So um, now it, it was really interesting where you talked about obviously the integrations from a, a procurement perspective and, and knowing, you know, where, where Coupa has come from in the past. You also hear a lot now in the industry of industry about other types of software or tools within a company outside of procurement. And, and I don't know if you have or have thought about those integrations like HR systems or um, others that people look at in terms of would it be easier to have HR feeds or to have data connected to these systems. Um, so just curious if, if you've looked outside of procurement as well. Yeah, no, it's a great question. And and it, it's something that we spend a lot of time thinking about. Um, most people don't know this, but but Coupa is an acronym. Um, and the C in Coupa stands for comprehensive, uh, which is um, you know, signifying of our strategy to build out a broad business spend management platform. So lots of different applications on a single platform. But we always balance that with the O in Coupa, uh, which stands for open. And um, the open approach that we take is build everything API first. So if we ever need to connect anything into our platform, um, both data coming in and data coming out, we're, we're able to do that. But second, um, you know, we invest heavily in making those APIs um, available and connected to the, the ecosystem of partners. And, and the way that we, we, we have two different ways that we do that. One, we have lots of Coupa built extensions to our platform. So integrations directly into the ERP, like NetSuite, Oracle, et cetera. Um, integrations directly into the HR system, whether that be Workday um, or, or any HRIS that, that you might use. Um, Integrations to other travel and expense management providers, if you're using only a portion of our solution, like our expense platform integrates with uh, Agencia, with Citric, with Get There, if you're not quite ready to adopt our, our travel side of things and you only want to adopt the expense management side. So that's one of our approaches is, is to own those, those integrations where we think we need best in class, you know, first rate integration. But we also last year launched the Coupa app marketplace. And this is a, a, a initiative that we're really proud of that today over 90 different companies have built their own applications and advertised them on the Coupa app marketplace um, in order to add additional value to our, our customers. And this was a really exciting turning point for us as we thought about our, our, our platform-based strategy that um, we have been recognized so much as a platform that companies like Anaplan, a, a financial planning software company, um, or, or Cofax, or any of the, the, the different third parties who want to build on top of our platform are investing dollars and resources to increase the capability of our platform for our customers. Yeah, I love that. And, and I think it's uh, something we'll hopefully see more in the future in business travel is, is um, API led first, um, this open, this, this building of that. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think open is just, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's scary for some, you know, it's like, uh, uh, are there, are, are, am I going to open the floodgates to uh, who knows what? Am, if, is someone going to build a better mousetrap on top of my mousetrap? But I think time and time again, we've always seen open be the best approach. Um, you know, Apple really pioneered that with the App Store and the iPhone that now all of a sudden this didn't have the five or six apps that Apple built, like a calendar app and a calculator app, but it could have anything that any developer dreams of that, that could go on your iPhone. And we're really trying to do the, the same thing with the app marketplace. Yeah. Okay, great. So another question I have is just around characteristics, types of companies you, you are working with or, or want to work with. Um, is this more of a, a fit for, you know, certain types of organizations? Yeah. So, so let me answer that question in two parts. The first is when I look at the broader Coupa business spend management platform, and, and I include our expense management solution in that category, because that's, it, it, it's been around for about 12 years. It's one of our earliest modules, most mature modules. It's, it's a, a fit for companies of, of every single size. 
Um, across those four applications, we have over 2,500 customers. We've deployed that those products in over 125 countries. Uh, we have high growth early stage companies using our, our software, but we also have some of the largest brands in the world, including Procter & Gamble, BMW, Unilever, using our core, core application. Uh, now, we're not quite there yet with, with Coupa Travel. Coupa Travel is uh, going to have its one year birthday here in a, a couple of months, so, so only 10, 10 months old. And so we needed to start somewhere with, with the travel side of things. Um, and really, we believe that Coupa Travel works best for U.S.-based companies who have anywhere between 70 to 80 percent of their travel as U.S. originating. Now, that can be domestic travel or it can be international travel, but U.S. originating is, is the important part. And, and, and really, there's two primary reasons for that. One, today we've only integrated a U.S. point of sale. The tickets are purchased in, in USD and calculated uh, with the taxes and fees associated with the U.S. point of sale. And today, travel leaders provide support only in, in an English language. So. Again, not just for domestic travel, but really for US headquartered companies is, is, is really where, the, where we found the best fit for customers today. Now, of course, we'll be expanding that. We'll be adding additional languages. We'll be adding additional points of sale, but we need to start somewhere and, and see success with those customers. Now, again, I wanna be really clear. None of those restrictions or those limits apply when we're talking about our expenses solution. So big expenses, like I said, is used by a large percentage of our customers today that are international, have very specific needs in, in specific international markets. And in fact, we think that Coupa Expenses is a fantastic on-ramp into, into the, the Coupa platform. So any international needs that you might need, whether that's for DMs in EMEA, whether that's VAT, tax calculation, fringe benefit tax, tax calculation, certified receipt digitization, we, we, we have all of those capabilities on, on expenses today. Okay, great. Yeah, that, that's good to, to learn more about that. And, you know, you touched on the, the travel management piece, the expense piece. So what about the, the virtual pay piece? Is that kind of similar in terms of a, a, a newer solution along with travel? Yeah, uh, so virtual payments has a, a three or four year head start on travel, um, and, and so it's also much further in its globalization journey. Um, one of the unique things that we've done with our virtual payment solution is that it, it's bring your own bank. So you don't need a credit line with Coupa. You're not getting underwritten by, by Coupa. You're not replacing your spend, whether that's with Citibank or with American Express or U.S. Bank or Silicon Valley Bank. All of those partners are integrated directly on our platform. So whatever the international coverage of your card program today is, um, for the most part maps to the international coverage that we have on, um, on, on Coupa Pay, because we're issuing those virtual cards directly out of your existing credit line. Now, depending on some of the international capabilities of the bank, some of their, uh, point, some of their uh, countries might not be um, enabled for virtual payments yet, but there's nothing Coupa uh, uh, restrictive or, or, or there's, there's nothing different than the restrictions that Coupa has um, com compared to your bank. So if you work with a large international bank, I have no concerns with Coupa pay and Coupa virtual payments working um, uh, in those countries. Okay, got it. All right. Uh, well, one one last question I wanted to ask, and, you know, we're, we're kicking off a brand new year, hopefully, uh, a year that's not plagued by some of the, you know, pandemic and COVID issues of the past. And you guys, you know, have a fresh new one year solutions. Congratulations on that, that one year anniversary, but any, um, I guess, uh, prediction or something you'd like to see happen in the business travel world this year, something that you think will happen. Yeah. You know, I think that there's two really interesting things happening in travel that, isn't just going to affect the shape of things to come in 2023, but I think really it's going to fundamentally change our industry um, in, in terms of volumes, in terms of the way that people travel. Um, the first one is uh, the sustainability goals that companies are setting. Um, you know, I've, I've talked with a ton of travel managers and we look at those sustainability goals and we really look at the only way that companies are going to hit those sustainability goals is by fundamentally changing the amount that they travel. Um, you can buy carbon assets all you want. You can use uh, sustainable fuels all you want. But in order to get carbon neutral, 
many of our customers need to significantly cut down on, on the amount of, of travel that they're doing today. So I think you're really going to see a shift. If those goals continue to be important, then I, you know, I personally think that they should be. And, and I believe that there will be both um, business pressures and regulatory pressures for those goals to be important. You're going to see companies shifting far more to focus on what is a high value business trip. And why does it matter that we're taking that trip? And how do we make the decision to go or not go? Not make the decision to buy the 5%, you know, less um, uh, emissions uh, you know, flight or, you know, stay at a green hotel, but actually make the core decision, should I be taking this trip or should I not? Because that's going to have the biggest impact. Um, so uh, through that lens, we're spending a lot of uh, time thinking about how do we build tools and technologies that help companies measure their carbon footprint for their trip and then make some actionable decisions that we, you know, using that, that footprint on whether that's building travel budgets for the next year or whether that's, that's helping companies decide whether they, they should be taking the trip or not. So that's, I think, major change number one, um, which will reduce travel volume. Uh, major change number two, which uh, we're actually seeing increased travel volume. So these are gonna be kind of uh, uh, um, competing interests for companies, is that with the shift to remote work, um, we see companies that are remote first or remote hybrid actually spending more on travel per capita, so per employee, than companies that were centrally located. Because if you think about it, you know, a centrally located company where 80% of the employees um, are, are, are in an office, and it's really those 20% of employees, which are sales and customer success who are flying around to customers and, and meeting them, you know, it's a very small portion of the company who, who are frequent travelers versus in a remote centric company, you know, most of the remote companies that I've talked to at least get employees together once a year. So that's by default, one flight, one hotel for all employees. But then companies are doing all of these small gatherings where, you know, I might with, with my product engineering team might want to do a quarterly kickoff where I get everyone in the same room. We have those kind of critical collaboration conversations. That's a lot of travel and it's a different type of travel and it's a different travel for traveler persona. More and more, we see business travelers getting on their first business trip that they've ever taken after the pandemic because they moved uh, to some you know, beautiful remote location. They're loving it. They never want to move back to the city, but, but they do want to collaborate with their, their colleagues so they, they get back in person once a quarter, once a year, et cetera. So those I think are going to really change the shape of, of technology. I think it's going to change the shape of how we think about business travel and, and what, what we think is important to optimize around. You know, ultimately, our, our job in the business travel industry um, is, is travel is a means to an end. Um, the end might be in-person collaboration. The end might be, be closing a deal. And so while our means remain the same, you know, we're still going to be getting on the same plane, still going to be staying at the same hotels. I think the end that we're going to be driving to, whether that be a um, you know, more sustainable travel program or whether that be a travel program that supports the needs of, of our um, infrequent travelers and our remote workers, um, I think that's what's fundamentally changing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we've, we've been very focused on that purposeful travel piece and, and trying to, to find that. So, well, thank you, Devin. Um, great conversation. It was really exciting to hear a lot about the platform, the, the technology. Hopefully this has been helpful to the listeners um, as we look to identify these new providers and their, their different solutions in this Tech Safari series. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, you've been listening to the Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. For more information about GBTA and its work, visit gbta.org. And be sure to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, thanks for listening. <laughs>